So the summer heat is on. It's ridiculously hot, the hottest part of the year right now, but that's pretty typical. It's the end of July. So today I wanted to give you some updates, just general updates on a bunch of different things, some other projects from last year, and then also some projects that are coming up this year and give you a sense of where things are at during probably the worst time of our season for cool season grass right now. First here, I'm back in the fescue. And to say that it's done a lot better than last year with the bluegrass is pretty much an understatement at this point. A lot less water. It's still looking really green and nice and I have really haven't had too much issue with any sort of fungus either now the lows in the last couple of evenings have been in the mid 70s and very very humid so that's difficult for our grass because it's already in a stress period and then that type of humidity is just the perfect recipe to get some fungus issues going on but I've only put down one application about a week or so ago of some disease X on this once so I knew we were getting into our worst type of humidity and it's really been doing well. There's a couple of brown issues here and there just if you really go inspect things, but that I think is honestly more from the heat stress than it is anything else. Overall, you take a broad picture look of this thing, much, much better than what I had last year. So I'm happy about that. Now, am I thrilled about having three inch grass back here again and kind of a longer grass? That's not really my preference, but knowing that this faces the west, it gets all day sun, so much stress back here. I just wanted to test this out and leave it here for at least this season. And seeing what I'm seeing now, I don't really plan to change it just because it's been doing so much better than what I had and I'm not gonna live here forever, so I'm not gonna do too many more projects, which we'll get into today as well. So I think the last time that I did an update out here, we haven't really had any rainfall. So it's been about three weeks since rain, and I've been probably watering this about a half an inch per application every five days-ish. Um, I haven't been doing exact measurements on it. I probably should have been, but I've been able to stretch the watering in between those waterings just a lot more this season with this grass. Definitely this fall, I think it's gonna get better once I get into the fall fertilizer program I push it a little bit more than I have been and then also probably be able to get some nice stripes on it this fall season so front yard is actually doing pretty well considering is it starting to get stressed yeah it's absolutely probably at its max point right now but for the temperatures again I know I'm just gonna keep talking about this today but it's been a really extremely stressful year for us still surviving still looking pretty good I'm dealing with a ton of weed pressure this year that's going to have to be dealt with in the fall time I'm waiting that out until I get to some cooler temperatures and I'm not gonna spray anything until I get the grass back to more of a not so stressed out type of period of time here so that's coming later on I don't typically have to do that much but for some reason this year I don't know if it's just the stressful period I don't know what has changed other than there's a ton of weeds in this neighborhood. Uh, it's just everywhere. So I got a lot of different broadleaf stuff. It's not going to be difficult to control, but it will be something that I'm going to have to do if I want this to look a lot cleaner than it does right now. Overall, color is great. I just put down an iron application a couple nights ago. One of my absolute favorite products, the Lawn Energizer product does a great job of just bringing out a little bit of boost of color and you can definitely see it within a couple days which I'm seeing right now so love that product we do have that in the gallons box from simple lawn solutions if you want to check that out now remember I show you the good and the bad here a couple things not looking so great this bluegrass out near the street and the mono stand sections of bluegrass have some different things going on of which I still haven't really sorted out completely but this one out here towards the front is just not looking that great I haven't been a fan of it too much honestly the whole time I will show you right now there's some definite color differences between the two that I hope will show up on camera so I really don't know if this is gonna show on camera but this is the bluegrass section over here of course front yard is ryegrass in person you can see quite a difference in color much darker on the rye than it is on the bluegrass so I'd really like to try to match these a little bit better so that's kind of what I'm thinking but overall all this brown stuff that's in here I've been watering and watering and watering and it's not changing so it's telling me that's not dormant grass there's something else going on so I looked for fungus I looked for other areas around these spots are there any lesions on the grass blades next to them no not seeing anything so then I'm thinking maybe some kind of insect issue but what's strange about it is the fact that it is only on this bluegrass I have not seen it anywhere else and so that type of thing is kind of strange as well you would think right next to it if I have ryegrass you would have some of the same typical things going on if it was an insect problem so haven't really sorted this out but I'm just kind of at this point letting it go to see what's going to happen I am really thinking about renovating this either cutting out the sod and just seeding it that way or very soon killing this off and changing it to ryegrass so that it matches the front yard since this is all kind of one section when you drive down the road and if I don't do that I will definitely over 
overseed it with rye this year if I decide not to kill it. But the problem is that it's a little higher already than the sidewalk, so I was thinking about cutting out the sod in order to bring it back down. We'll see how that process all goes. I have so many projects coming up that I have to be a little more choosy this year on my time and what I'm gonna be able to actually do. So either way, for sure, it's getting ryegrass overseed and uh, torn apart with the dethatcher too. There's a lot of just junk in there, dead material from the summertime. Okay, mono stands over here, they look a lot better even two days after that application. And I know that might seem crazy, like, oh, there's no possible way. That's kind of the way that foliar apps work though. You're supposed to see the results and not have to wait on a granular to break down or anything. So these are still not looking perfect. I'll show you some close-ups of what's going on here, but overall they look a lot better than they did even a couple days ago once I got some more iron on them there's a little better color going on but definitely still something weird with this bluegrass let's take a look all right so you'll see a spot like this and most of everything looks fairly green and then you'll notice these little dots now a lot of times people would say oh well, it has to be dollar spot i'm not seeing anything really that has shown that in any other areas and the difference also with this is that wherever it's dead like this you come in and everything comes out so all the root system is completely gone so any of these spots, you just lightly come in there, all of it's gone. That really leads me to believe that there's something insect going on in that situation when all of the roots have been eaten through. But it's not widespread. It's very kind of just splotchy throughout here. And also when inspecting all of these roots, I don't find anything. Also inspecting down into here, I don't see any grubs. I don't see anything that leads me to believe that there's some widespread issue there. Definitely starting to grow what bluegrass does, which is some decent amount of thatch here. This thing is getting really, really thick in this season. And so I will be coming through this fall and thinning this and really beating it up because it needs that. And like I talked about in the last video, some ryegrass back here, ryegrass back here. Uh, I may decide to also put rye into this. I don't know, we'll see. I've been make, going back and forth on all these things, but definitely bluegrass, it's a sod former, so it really gets tight. We'll be doing some work on that. I'll show you what I'll be doing, but this whole thing is kind of baffling me and not sure what's going on. So a couple other quick things to note here before I go inside and cool off a little bit, and I'm gonna show you a couple things going on at the property as we start to prepare for some fall things there. Also, I wanted to show you Will's yard. A lot of people have been asking about the project that we did across the street last year. That is my neighbor, Will, and he's been keeping up with things very well this summer. For a yard that is not a year old yet, this is looking absolutely great. So he's been doing the work, he's been keeping up with everything, he's been doing a fantastic job. I wanted to show you that today and show you kind of what that that's looking like right now the same type of stress I've been dealing with in terms of our heat lack of water all that stuff so he's been doing a great job over there I wanted to update you on that there's a couple of dog spots that happen in the front yard now our dogs don't really ever go out into the front yard very much because we have a fenced in backyard but sometimes when someone comes over or they come out into the front yard briefly they might go there and usually we just instantly hit that with water well somehow that didn't happen this time and this has definitely happened before but just killed off a couple spots now with ryegrass I have to fix these spots because they will somewhat tiller into an area but it's not going to be drastic amount of spreading. What I think I'm going to do is just take a couple of plugs off the edge of the yard and I'll reseed those areas later this fall. But for right now, if I want to fix this, I'll probably just use the pro plugger, take a plug off the side of the yard and put them into that spot. I'll probably make a short video on that coming up once it's not killer hot outside. So if you want to know more about that, I'll give you those options coming up in a video very soon. So this area right here behind me is the only section of lawn that I have not renovated at some point. Uh, this little bit right here, it's around 300 square feet, something like that, I need to look at my map again. But this section will be getting sprayed this year. I was waiting for all of our landscape bed to go in and figure out where things were going to be, but now that that's done, this section is gonna be removed and something else put in here. I think I'm going to go with tall fescue. What I think I'm going to do differently is real mow this section just like I'm really mowing that front section. So as soon as I real mow and I come out into here, I wanna do that with some tall fescue. It's gonna be a challenge. This is some of the hottest area of the lawn because of all day sun. So I just figured that'd be a nice challenge to try. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. 
but I think that is what I'm going to do in this spot. A reminder on a video that I released recently, if you haven't seen it about preparing for fall renovation, if you are going to do a fall renovation, you need to get started on this stuff very soon and make sure you have your supplies. Seed has been going really quickly, so if you're interested in getting some of my seed, I would definitely try to start doing that sooner rather than later. Definitely there's some supply issues like everything else in the world on some of this high-end seed, so you're gonna wanna get that soon if you want to do that. So let's talk about the property now, and Kelsey's gonna give you an update on her garden stuff as well. I know this has been a whole mix of things today, but thanks so much for following along with all this stuff. I wanted to get an update out before I forget about this stuff and kind of keep you in real time with what's going on. Well, welcome back to the land of all things overgrown. As you can see here, what used to be a field last year has turned into uh, nothing but weeds. But, you know, in some ways, I guess that's good because although it hasn't rained, if it would have rained and we have nothing here, we're probably gonna get quite a bit of erosion. So I'm back out here today to start to prepare to get ready for a renovation season and see if I can do anything with this area over here and get some plots started. So of course I would have preferred to have some irrigation in place. We're still looking at getting a well and working on all that stuff, but I don't think it's gonna happen before we get to the end of this season. That's still a plan that's coming, but for now, what I'm gonna try to do is cross my fingers, get this thing at least somewhat fixed up here, get rid of all these weeds and start to plant some grass out here and get some plots going. So for those of you who didn't see the property video and the intro to this, this whole area right here, uh, I don't know the exact measurements of this plot. I need to figure that out but it's at least 160 feet wide and the driveway area is 1100 feet long to the main gate i'm not going to be planting grass and all of that by any means right now but there's plenty of space here to start some different testing plenty of room over time for me to do a whole bunch of fun stuff and test a lot of different grass seeds and see how they do. So for right now today, I wanna to get a soil test. So I'm going to go ahead and get some soil out of here if I can, it's really, really dry. And then I'm going to try to measure out some area and see kind of what my potential area is for these test plots. And then for the fall season, I'm just gonna be crossing my fingers that we have at least some sort of natural irrigation and I'm gonna to have to time that out with seeding. Now this could be a complete disaster and not work at all, but judging from the property that we seeded last year, uh, the, about two acres out at Paul's house. If you haven't seen that video, you can check that out. We actually had pretty much the same types of conditions and it only rained a couple times and he got some really good results. So I'm just gonna have to time this properly if I can. And like I said, if it doesn't work, then I will be doing some more work on this next spring and hopefully by then have some sort of irrigation that I can make sure I grow these in the right way. I need to get something going so that I have some new things to work on out here. That was the whole point of it. You just kind of got to work with what you got sometimes. Let's look at these cracks in the ground. I have a pretty good feeling I'm not going to be able to get anything out of this, but let's see if I can find a spot. I think I'll be able to get something. It's gonna be amazingly fun to mow all this down and see how much it changes. So normally, whenever you're doing the soil test, you're gonna to wanna to remove all that organic matter at the top, but considering that this is just straight soil, there really isn't anything in there to remove. There's no grass or anything like that. I'm gonna go try to find a few more spots. Obviously, I don't wanna have just soil just from one spot. I want to try to find some other areas that I can grab things from and that way I have a good sample of the total area and not one spot but it's gonna be a little difficult to find probably some spots so I'm gonna do my best. Alright so here's what I ended up with that should be enough to get me started probably next spring I will go through and do another full make sure I have soil samples you know all the way down to four to six inches. These, this one probably on most of them wasn't quite that depth but it'll be good enough to at least give me a sense of what's here. I wanna at least get this cleaned up, make it look better, and I'll uh, probably have to have a Harley rake out here, smooth things out, and then we'll need to spray it out. So I'm gonna measure out some areas now, try to figure out how much space I have and how much grass seed I actually wanna put down. Right now, I don't think I really wanna put any plots in over a thousand square feet. I think I just make it easy and do some plots that are, that are right at a thousand, and that way all my applications and everything are going to be easy to calculate. And then eventually I will be able to pretty easily put some water on those as well and figure all that out. Probably I'll just be doing above ground on this section um, for the time being whenever I get a well in. That way whatever changes I can move it and I don't have to put anything in the ground and dig it all up.
You may remember this area on the first property tour. This is the camp area. And the first time that I probably showed it, it was a complete mess. Now we've done a lot of cleanup down here and it looks a lot better. So we decided to get out of the heat today. It was one of the hottest days of the year and come back here. It's almost dark now. So I just wanted to show you this shade area and absolutely I'm gonna do some shade testing down here. I would like to plant some sort of, you know, fine fescue type thing down in this section. It really only gets pretty much filtered light throughout the day. And there's some trees, a couple trees that I do need to take down that are just kind of out in the middle of nowhere here. We will probably remove a couple of those, but there's enough shade canopy here that there's gonna be some good shade testing. And then it'll be a really minimal area for me in terms of mowing and stuff because that stuff doesn't grow very fast, especially when you're not going to have a lot of sunlight to it. Anytime it does rain, it seems like this area really doesn't dry out very much. So I think if we get some rainfall and I just kind of do a natural irrigation on it, I think I'll be fine with that. Harvest and canning season is off to a great start so far. There's a lot left to be done, but thought I'd show you how things are looking in the garden and kind of what I'm planning on doing as we move into the fall. Pepper plants and onions are doing great. Onions are about ready to go, so those will be pulled within the next week or so probably, and we're gonna pickle those, make some pickled red onions. Peppers have been in full bloom. Got some jalapenos that are really doing well. My pimento peppers and red peppers, while not yielding great amounts, are starting to turn and starting to ripen, so I, I will get those in the canner as well within the next few weeks. Uh, I had a couple kinds of peas in the garden this year, and I lost the garden peas to rabbits, those little buggers ate them right through the fence. So I'm gonna take that space and I'm actually gonna put in a fall crop of green beans. I have a little bit of time yet before, uh, about 12 weeks before our first frost date. So I get a little bit more of a yield on green beans and take that space. Behind me here are some sugar snap peas. And if you're looking at these, you're gonna go, well, those look pretty rough. To be honest, I'm really happy with how these have produced. These are a cool season crop, and usually you'll do two plantings of these. You'll do a spring one early, right after your last frost date, um, even a little bit before, because peas can handle a light frost. And then you'll do a fall planting. So these really should have been done performing in June, but I'm still getting flowers. I'm still getting fruit. Things look really good. I probably won't let them go too much longer because their yield has really slowed down. And I'm gonna take this space and put in a fall planting of carrots and get one more row of carrots in here as well. Also in my peas here, I have my carrots and I had to do the thing that gardeners hate most, which for me isn't even weeding. I would come out here and weed all day if I could avoid thinning plants. I think thinning plants out is probably the hardest thing because you just want them all to survive. But in order for everything to do well and have enough space, you can't have them crowd each other. So these are now thinned. Um, we have a couple inches between each carrot plant so they have enough room to get nice and big. And so far they're looking really great. I had a couple of questions on the tomato plants. Um, so I thought I would address those too and a couple comments as well. I had some people that were concerned about putting tomato plants and sunflowers together and that the sunflowers would deter the growth of the tomato plants and actually I've had the reverse experience I have four sunflower plants that actually came up above the soil and only one of them is thriving. Um, the other three seem to be stunted and my tomato plants are doing great. So that was my experience with planting those together. I think they're stunted because the tomato plants grew so tall so quickly and they actually created a lot of shade for the sunflowers. So I just need to plan my timing a little bit better if I'm going to try that again next year. One of the other concerns that um, people expressed was a concern that I had as well about plants being so close to a metal shed with the sun beating down on them in the heat. Actually, they've done very well well. I had to go with it even though I knew that might be a concern because this is the only space I had to put them this year but I'm happy with how they performed. As far as fruiting I've got a couple plants here that have over 20 tomatoes on them each. I'm really happy with the support system that I used again this year. One lesson that I learned is taller stakes. The tomatoes have outgrown what I have given them so I have them tied up to the wire here um, but they are you know some of these branches are two to three feet above the wire, so they need they need more room. So taller stakes and a higher starting wire uh, with longer rope string, and then I think this system is gonna work great for me going forward. I would guess within the next two weeks, I will have a full harvest of tomatoes here, or at least 
starting two to three weeks we'll have all of these ripening there are more flowers on the plants these will continue to produce until frost hits them and the plant gets pulled these are an amish paste variety of tomato and that's an indeterminate variety which means that they will continue growing until until i stop them or until the season ends that's why they continue growing up above their supports that's why they you know will continue to flower they don't just produce everything all at one time um, they'll go throughout the rest of the season so that's everything that's going on in the garden certainly is busy time of year here with harvest just getting started I appreciate all the interest in what's going on out here and so glad that you're coming along with me if you have any other questions please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you so thanks everybody we'll see you in the next one that's it for today's video I'll have more coming really soon getting prepared for our fall season. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.